Hey guys, this is Wave618. It's the 1st of May 2019 and we're approaching half past five in the evening BST. All right, so in today's video, we're going to do an update on Bitcoin. Um, so coming up to a very, very pivotal point and it's a point uh, where, you know, a bearish bias could easily switch to a bullish bias should this level that we're currently at not hold. So we're going to go into depth as to what indicators we're going to be following to determine whether we need to switch that high time frame bias. So far, this level is holding, uh, but obviously, we need to see more price action to you know gain any real confidence in that move. But um, that's what we're going to be addressing in today's video. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, then stay tuned. Alright guys, so uh, yeah, just before we talk about the chart, just want to mention, I think it was a couple of days ago that I mentioned that uh, I did a 50% discount on my course. So that should be expiring in the next 24 hours. So if you are interested, you've got at least another 24 hours to take advantage of that. It's, uh, yeah, as I say, it's got really good feedback so far. It's really growing the number of people signing up and those people have been joining the uh, the Discord uh, which you get access to when joining, when purchasing the course. So um, yeah, that's a growing community now. We've been talking about many different charts with a particular focus on uh, Ripple of recent uh, and a couple of my followers have posted some really nice charts there. It's really good to see them applying the strategy that I use. Uh, and it's actually setting up quite nicely on Ripple. But uh, this today's video is all about Bitcoin. But if you're interested in, in the course, that deal is still on. So I'll post that link in the description and uh, also you'll be able to find it on Twitter. It's my, currently my pinned tweet. But anyway, let's get started on Bitcoin. So as I've been saying for a long time now, my long term count has been this WXY. It was a, a long time ago when we were caught up in this price action here that I was predicting 3.2 as the bottom. When that 3.2 occurred, we were seeing very sideways price action. I wasn't too happy with calling this the start of a new impulse uh, uh, wave up. I was quite concerned with this price action, and we're going to come. We're coming to a point now where we're going to decide whether this is impulsive or not, um, because so far it looks like it's completed a corrective sequence. And if it were to go higher, then it really begs the question whether this is corrective, because then the waves would look hyperextended. So that's what we're going to talk a bit more about in this video. But just to express this uh, long term count, we've got the three waves down to make W. Then we've got the uh, first X wave, which is this uh, A, B, C, D, E. So descending triangle right there. And there are three waves down, first wave, second wave, third wave. So that was our WXY. Now, there's always the possibility of that WXYXZ playout, which is what I wanted to consider. Um, so, so far it looks, so um, it's looking corrective and we're still within this major pitchfork, which basically demarcates the trend. Once the, the idea behind pitchforks is when you break the warning line, that's when you can say a new trend has developed. So the idea is we're in this bear market until the upper warning line breaks. And when that breaks, you can then say we're in a bull market. Yeah, we're creating a new trend which should be extrapolated from here and we should be looking at the trend going up. At present, we're still within the demarcation of this bear market um, until this upper warning line breaks. And you can see we're really close. We're going to find out soon, next few weeks, whether we're going to, um, whether this is going to hold or not. Obviously, sometimes these lines break slightly and we come straight back into the pitchfork. As you can see here, for example, went slightly above then came all the way down slightly below it came back in so you have to have a bit of leeway with pitchforks as i say it's not a it's not an um a signal to buy or sell it just gives you a demarcation of trend and i love to use them in um uh, in accordance with moving averages now the other significant moving average which we've been talking about recently is the 50 uh 50 week moving average so just 
plotting my moving averages on. So the 50s, uh, I always use the blue line for the 50. And this has acted as significant support and resistance going all the way back. I won't talk about too much here because I addressed that in the last video. Uh, but at present, we are currently at the 50 week simple moving average. And it's still holding us um, resistance at this level. Obviously, we're consolidating a little bit below it. Um, and we're going to see, are we going to roll over or are we going to break it? Now, if we break it and we break this upper warning line together, for me, that is a lost battle, a very significant battle for the bears. Yeah, I would be expecting them to show their strength at this point because they've got a lot of indicators to support them. They've got the, the 50 week simple and they've got the, the upper warning line and they've got the completion of this Elliott wave pattern here, which I'll go into shortly. So plenty of reasons for bears to be strong at this level. If they can't hold on to this level, for me, that is a, a sign of weakness from the bearish perspective. And I would strongly consider the bullish scenario if that occurs. If this does break, I wouldn't all of a sudden get excited because we're hitting overhead resistance at this level. You can see around 6,000 to 6,400. There's a hell of a lot of volume and resistance at this level. So, but the high time frame bias can change. So that can change to bullish. And then we look for retracements to, to get in essentially. So that's what that's how I'll be changing my stance on things should this level not hold. Um, but yeah, I've spoken many times at length about how I believed this could easily have been the end of the um, the correction from 20,000. Reason being is I've counted from the genesis in Bitcoin. So over the last 10 years, I, I believe this is the top of a major wave three and this has been a wave four. Now, in terms of time and uh, price, I believe this has certainly retraced enough and taken enough time to say that it's completed. So I, I think it's retraced probably around at least 80 percent. And um, yeah, I think around 80 percent. And and the duration is very similar to the, the wave two, in fact, which is very common. Um, you often get a, a similar duration of wave two and wave four, uh, especially within crypto, which is what I've noticed. Um, but yeah, so I would like to see some impulsive price action to confirm it really. Now this 200 week moving average, obviously this has acted as good support, but there's nothing to say it can't be retested. For example, you can see here this 50 week moving average, if it was extrapolated back, this wick you'll find actually comes below the 200 week moving average, but it closes. So the weekly close was actually probably above it. So you could get a similar play out here. For example, we could get a lower low and um, it may just wick down and then finally close above the 200 week moving average. It's just something to think about if we do come down further. Obviously at present, we're waiting to see what happens around this level to determine whether we're gonna be bullish or bearish. I'm very excited to see what happens because over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna get a good idea. Um, yeah, so that said, I think we can now just zoom in on the chart. So let's clean it up a little bit. Uh, let's go in on the daily. So yeah, as I say, for this price action, what I saw here was a relatively impulsive leg up here. And then this was all looking very much like um, consolidation to me. And I believe it was all part of the same pattern. So the way I labeled it was as a W, X is a ascending triangle. So that's A, B, C, D, and E. Finishing here, so that's our X wave. And then this is our Y wave up to here. And you can see, let's just demarcate that triangle because it's not so easy to see without labeling. So if we just start it here, A, comes down to here, B, C, D, and E. And if we just have a quick look at volume, you'll see throughout the course of this move, we've seen downward trending volume from here, down, 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 smaller volume, which kind of helps to validate the, the price, the pattern, which, uh, as I say, looks like a triangle to me. You've got a pretty flat top there, and you've got higher lows here to here. So, as I say, I, d I describe this as a, um, a triangle, and what further supports that is the fact that this wave has a good Fibonacci relationship, which is pretty much to the T. 
with the, the wave that comes out of it. So you can see the Y wave comes up to the 1.618 very nicely. Um, <clears throat> so again, further supports that this wave has a relation to this wave, which started here, which means that this is suggestive that this price action was all one, P, one wave, which suggests it's triangular with it being five waves which are converging with lower volume. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, so as I say, lots of reasons why this point here uh, gives the bears a good opportunity to, to go short. Now, so far we've not seen you know much volume come in. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a battle, but and I re the reason I believe that is because I think there's a bit of a stalemate going on. I know on crypto Twitter, for example, Pretty, most people are bullish at this point. So um, yeah, there's a, a bit of a stalemate going on. We're gonna find out very soon what happens. Um, could we get a bit of a, it's difficult to say, but obviously from the bullish scenario, people are looking at this as a, uh, a one, two, and then a one, two, three, and then we've got the fourth wave. They're looking at this running flat uh, wave four, and so they're expecting another leg up. So let's, we'll, soon, we'll find out soon whether that's going to happen. But what I also want to have a look at is on the shorter time frames here. So um, I think we get, can go down to the 15 minute even. Okay, let's go on the hourly. So since we hit this upper warning line, what have we seen? So prices come down in what looks like five waves there. So you've got your one, two, three, four, five. It's not the cleanest count, and I, this four does actually overlap with. Well, actually, I'm not sure it overlaps with wave one because this is not the end of wave one. Wave one, we'll have to zoom in to see this actually. Um, wow, that is very tight actually. So we need the 15 minute chart to see this. So wave, okay, wave one comes to here. So it does overlap, it looks like, with the wave four. So that would, I suppose, it doesn't look very uh, diagonal-like, which would allow for wave four to overlap wave one. So I suppose using this data, if we allow for this price up to here, we can't really use that count. So another way, if it were to be impulsive coming down, would be this was a wave one, and then this is some kind of running flat and then we've seen a wave three, and then we've seen a wave four, which hasn't quite yet overlapped with wave two, which the lowest point was down here. One way of looking at it, um, so it's really not that easy to tell. On the 15 minute chart, obviously the, the Elliott wave counts often get broken time and time again. I don't particularly like going down to the 15 minute chart. I'm just doing it to try and get a bit of extra information about what we can expect to see next. But I did have a look at this whole move here. I could see three waves up here, and then so then we had a nice big consolidation and then a breakout. So the way I was looking at that was a WXY, with this being W, there's your three waves. X was this, it looks like a converging triangle, so you got your A, B, C, D and E, and then, so let's just label that so it's a bit clearer. So you W and then you triangle X wave, so it starts here, A, B, C, D and E. So it's kind of converging price action as you can see. Okay, something like that. And then you can see a breakout and it's quite a sharp move up following that. Um, and if we do a Fib extension, so if this is our W, and then we extend that from the bottom of our X wave, which looks like it's around here. So, so far we've hit the 0.786. Okay, so there's a 0.786 
fibrillation ship there but it's looking like it may make another wave up may come up to the uh, to this level the one to one however that would then overlap with this so which if we were calling that wave two that would mean wave four overlaps with wave two actually sorry that that could be allowed it's the fact it would overlap with uh, it's important that it wouldn't overlap with wave one and wave one comes to here so price could come up to this level which is at 5460 and still there would be a, a some kind of valid count there with um, the wave four could come up to that level potentially but as I say it's looking like it it's come up to here since then it looks like still corrected price action suggesting another leg up may come up to the one-to-one -one. there is going to be horizontal resistance at that level around here there's going to be a lot of volume acting as resistance at this point so as I say this doesn't look too impulsive to me okay so people were expecting this to be the end of the wave four you know the, the wave four in a larger degree with this being our running flat and then they were looking for impulsive price action however this looks very triangular to me which you don't usually get in a, a wave two of an impulse so I would be leaning towards it being more corrective and that we're going to see another leg down eventually so that that's what I'm seeing at present and as I say we were getting very close to this upper warning line we're getting very close to that weekly um, 50 simple moving average so we're going to find out soon I don't like going down to the 50 minute and doing these other wave counts because often they get breached um, and they're not as a uh, they're not as useful on the shorter time frames but this is the way I'm looking at it at present we may just come up to um, 53.96 I've got here before perhaps turning over from there um, and if we do go higher as I say I'll be really questioning my bearish bias uh, but I'll be keeping you updated with further videos about that um, because it will all depend on real-time price action we have to see what price is doing to you know decide whether uh, our higher time frame bias is going to be bullish or bearish um, yeah I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to say in this video um, so yeah any queries any comments just put a comment down below in the video and uh, yeah if you've enjoyed the content then leave a like and uh, yeah I think we'll wrap it up there guys all right take care